All right, Apple, you've finally done it. You've finally lost your mind. You're off your chops. You're drunk, Apple. Go home, Apple. All right, champs, let's get rid of Windows Home and let's get some Windows Pro. Copy and paste my code from the description. New codes, new discount. You can get Windows Professional Office. Paste my code. Boom, it's Windows Pro time. All right, so tell you there, champs, and welcome to the show. If you're new around here, come on, sub up, join the Woo Train. And if you like this kind of video, and if you're an Apple fan, hey, just dislike and you can probably leave now. Because I have some sort of bad things to say about this, but uh, I do have some really good stuff to say about this after I get stuck into it. But I also will show you how you can configure this sort of on the cheap, well, cheap for whatever these things cost, and get excellent performance and good storage as well i'll also show you how to spec this up to actually blow away the base model imac pro and you know you have to add a few different things here and there but this will blow away the base model imac pro no doubt so anyway they've dropped new imacs and as you can see it looks exactly the same it is exactly the same as far as i can tell and pretty much everyone said design was getting a little bit tired just because of those bezels look at those huge bezels yeah it's 2019 yeah they should have done something with that but it is what it is they still look okay but yeah there are better design things out there these days but from the back they look good so if you're in an office or whatever and you know you got to show it off from the back they look fine but when you look at the bezels yeah big bezel bummer the reason they've lost the plot let's just go to buy and yeah apple's expensive yes you can buy a pc much cheaper and whatever that's fine this is apple this should be no surprise to you so i'm not even going to go down that route but um have a look here, all right? This is US pricing, by the way. You cannot, even if you get the top of the line one, you cannot get SSD storage unless you get a configure to order, a CTO or whatever they call it. So you cannot walk in a store and buy one with an SSD. Oh, it's 2000, I just checked, it's 2019 and they don't have an SSD in these iMacs. Are you kidding me? Are you joking? Off your friggin' chops, Apple. This is, I don't think this is acceptable in 2019 that you do not have SSDs in your, you know, your iMac. And they're friggin' expensive. And you even have it in your Mac Mini. And I heard the product manager say, oh, yeah, well, you know, with a MacBook, you need it. You need SSD because, you, you know, it's portable and all this. What a load of rubbish. And she then went on to say, oh, but you get the best of both worlds with this uh, Fusion Drive. You get the speed of SSD and the storage of a mechanical hard drive. No, 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 no. It's not how these things work. Yeah, it's got a bit of cache there that, yeah, if something's cached, it will be fast. Yeah, that's true. But they're still dog slow when you don't have anything cached. They're unreliable and they're noisy. This is just unacceptable for me. I will say that if you're just doing office work, it'll be perfectly fine. And also the top of the spec one, you can only get eight gigs of RAM, eight gigs. So if you walk into a store, you can only get an eight gigs RAM model. Even if you buy the top of the line, you have to configure one yourself to get more than eight gigs. Now, fortunately, I think you can upgrade them. If they haven't changed it from the last model, it should be upgradable. But um, I haven't seen one in the flesh, so. But the old one was, and this looks like exactly the same as the old one. So to add insult to the brain dead thing of giving you a mechanical hard drive in 2019, it cost you, if you want one terabyte of storage, $700 US. It's like over $1,000 Australian. Now, you cannot buy one with the SSD and a hard drive as well. So this leads me to believe that they are just putting in a SATA or a SATA SSD in there. That they're not putting a, like an NVMe or they're not using their proprietary um, controller with their own flash storage. And I don't see any mention of T2 chip here. Woo! No T2, baby. That'll be awesome. But that makes me think that they're going to put a normal SSD in there, a normal SATA SSD, SATA SSD, and they're charging you 700 bucks, $1,000 Australian for that. What? You can pick a one terabyte SATA SSD up retail if you look for sales from 120 to 140, maybe 150 US. And here in Australia, I've seen them for 140 for a terabyte. That was the sale. 
granted, but I have seen them for 170 up to 200. Usually you can get them for that sort of price. So even for Apple standard, that, that storage markup, and especially if it's a SATA, if that's not NVMe storage or whatever, if that's just, they're replacing that mechanical hard drive with a SATA SSD, that is just the ripoff of the century. And Apple should go in the hall of fame for the biggest ripoffs because that is just, uh, that can't be, seriously. Can it be a SATA SSD? No. Tell me it's not true. So anyway, I'll show you how to configure this up cheap and get the best bang for buck out of it. So let's go back. So if you just wanted to configure it up on the cheap, what I'd suggest is you get the base model. If you don't need the eight cores, just get the base model. You should be able to upgrade the RAM yourself. So leave the RAM by itself. Fusion drive, you can actually leave it like that, okay? So what you do is you get an external hard drive. You can get something like this, the Samsung X5 which is an MVM external drive. So this is as fast as any MVME drive. Uh, you know, we're getting reads and writes well into the 2000s. It is super fast. Thunderbolt 3, it connects, and this does have two Thunderbolt 3s. You could just get a normal, just any, just portable SSD. You could do that. And then what you could do is boot off that and use this one terabyte fusion drive as the sort of archival drive. You could do that and then you don't worry about the graphics. If you wanted to boost up the graphics, this is the 570X graphics. If you just wanted to boost up the graphics, you could of course get a Kidiad No Pro and then or any external enclosure, Thunderbolt 3 enclosure, and just put you know a graphics card in it and boost it up if you wanted down a track. But that may suffice for you just having the external SSD and booting off that and using this as the storage drive. But if you wanted to configure this to blow away the entry level iMac Pro, which is $5,000, remember it starts at, and that has 32 gigs RAM, that has terabyte SSD, has a Vega 56, I think, I think of Vega 56, and it has an eight core processor. All right, so if we wanna beat that, and this will beat this, this eight core processor is better than the eight core processor that goes into the iMac Pro because it's got faster clocks. Now, whether this can make the use out of it due to thermal limitations, I don't know. We don't know the thermals on these yet. If you really want me to get one of these, I will buy one. I'll compare it to a PC and I'll compare it to the MacBook Pro I'm using now. If you really want me to, I can do that. Leave a thumbs up there. But if you want this to beat the Mac Pro, just go boom. Get that 8-core beast, i9, 9900. has to be the 9900K. That's the only one that's 5 gigahertz that I know of. So it has to be that... You leave the RAM how it is, okay? You're gonna upgrade the RAM yourself. It comes with a Radeon Pro 580X. You also have the option of Radeon Vega 48, which is eight gigabytes of HBM2 memory. It won't be as good as a Vega 56, of course. So what we do, again, is get the Akidio No Pro, then buy a Vega 56 or a Vega 64, put it in one of these things, or you can get the black magic one if you want, but that thing's a rip off. Then we'll use that for the graphics. So that will blow away any of these graphics options here. And, and if you get the Vega 64, it'll blow away the Vega 56 that's in the iMac Pro. Then for storage, you could just use this two terabyte fusion drive as the archival drive. Again, get this Samsung external NVMe for the boot drive, or you could just buy the cheapest storage that enough for your apps, maybe 512 is enough for your apps, and then use that as the second drive, the, the Samsung storage, or you could just use an external SSD, a normal just SSD if you want to put external stuff on there. If you do this, upgrade the RAM to the 32 gigs, you would then have a computer that would blow away the entry level iMac Pro. The iMac Pro does come with 10 gigabit ethernet. So what you would have to do is, if you were using both your Thunderbolt ports, one for the SSD and one for your external eGPU, this actual eGPU enclosure actually has a Thunderbolt. So you could add a 10 gigabit NIC to this, or you could get a Thunderbolt dock and then connect the 10 gigabit ethernet to that if you really needed it. But if you don't need 10 gigabit, just uh, yeah, don't worry about it. And then yeah, spec it up like that and you got a beast that beats the iMac Pro for much less money. Uh, that's the way to go. So I'd like to thank you guys for watching. What do you guys think? Do you think this is uh, a bit of a rip or do you think it's okay uh, using the same sort of chassis, the same sort of design? It's not too bad, I guess. Um, let me know what you think about it. Catch you in the next one.